My name is Paul Farrell, and I am the chairman of the board of directors and a founding member of the Chiari and Syringa Myelia Foundation. I'm Dorothy Poppy, the executive director of the Chiari and Syringa Myelia Foundation. If, if you take a look at Chiari and Syringa Myelia, they're, they're very, very obscure disorders, and that's one of the things we, we uh, consistently need to teach people about what these disorders are. There's nothing, there's no celebrity, there's nothing that we can do to make this seem like uh, um, Lou Gehrig's disease or something that is more well known. They're, they're, right now, we just, we're, we're saddled, and syringomyelia, most people can't even say it. It's curious to me that there are um, other disorders um, and organizations out there who are raising hundreds of millions of dollars for these disorders that afflict a, a, a fraction of the people who are afflicted with Chiari and syringomyelia. So we've got a nine-year-old who's been suffering since the day he was born, and it's just going to get worse for him. And we can do more surgery. But that just makes him suffer more, and there's no proven... There's nothing to prove that the surgery is going to help. It's just more invasive. You could be causing more problems, you know, and it's still not taking the pain away. It, you know, they're, they're still suffering, and there's no one in sight, and he's nine, and he has the rest of his life to live like this. For example, there are between 350,000 and 400,000 people affected by multiple sclerosis. The National Multiple Sclerosis Foundation raises $99 million a year. The federal government gives them an additional $98 million a year. CM and SM doesn't even make the list. This needs to change. Um, my son Matt, our oldest, uh, has a Chiari malformation uh, and very fortunately as of today does not have syringomyelia. When I try to explain to people what Chiari is who don't really have a medical background, I, I try to say, imagine a child with a perfectly normal brain nothing wrong with their brain but the house that the brain is in the skull is slightly too small uh, like any new parents we were bewildered just by uh, the experience of a, of a newborn um, and he cried a lot but kids do right I had no capacity to to ease his pain but by the time Matt was one uh, one to 18 months um, it was clear to us that there were other, other problems. We were very much at the end of our rope after um, a long, hard 18 months of trying to figure out what was wrong with our son. And our friends and family really knew that we were in trouble. My wife pointed out to me in photographs that when we would hold Matt, uh, if he was vertical, he was happy, he was smiling, he was just, just the happiest kid you've ever seen. But he always had a hand up next to his head, literally as if he was holding his head. You know, we did our homework. We interviewed a bunch of neurosurgeons. I think we interviewed five. We chose the last neurosurgeon we visited, um, Dr. John Ruge at Lutheran General, mostly because um, he was the man that looked at us and said, if this were my own son, I wouldn't let him live one more day thinking that this was life. The first 90 days or so after surgery were uh, pretty harrowing. And um, when you think back, to all the people that had gone before Matt um, and the surgeries that had gone wrong because this is uncharted waters. Um, it just really tears at your heart. My name is Bob Jones IV. I'm the grandson of legendary golfer Bobby Jones, the only man to win golf's Grand Slam all four national championships in the same year. He also suffered from syringomyelia. When he died in 1971, little was known about the disease, little could be done about the disease. Now we do know more. But the reality of it is that research is very expensive. It requires a tremendous amount of capital to conduct medical research, especially of the kind that we need to really learn about this condition. And it's almost more than individual donors can even do. But with the help of individual donors 
and with the help of corporations who are concerned to make life better for what we estimate to be almost a quarter of a million people who suffer from this condition, I believe that we can build a base from which solid research can be done and so that future generations might not have to suffer in silence as my grandfather did for 25 years. Bobby Jones was a private man and was reluctant to have syringomyelia become known as Bobby Jones' disease. His family and his grandson, Bob Jones IV, now recognize the need for a celebrity connection with the disease and with our organization. The family has graciously agreed to allow CSF to exclusively use the Bobby Jones name in association with our organization and in our pursuit of our ultimate goal to find a cure for Chiari and syringomyelia. And the work of CSF has become a driving passion for my entire family. When you attend a function of CSF, you meet people from all walks of life, from all corners of the country, all of whom share an experience that my family has been through. We have all either suffered with the disease or watched family members whom we dearly loved suffer with this disease. And I have never been with a group of people in my life that have the passion, the love, and the dedication of the people of the Chiari and Syringomyelia Foundation. And his family's been extremely generous and lent the name of Bobby Jones, who all golfers recognize, and can hopefully identify what he suffered from with what we're trying to raise awareness with today. I see the children and the people that are affected with this giving pennies, quarters, dollars with the hope that this will add up, inspire other people to be motivated to raise money and help those that have this condition. I do have a passion for finding the answers to these disorders because I lived on those neurological floors with the kids who are suffering with this. And my son's walking. So I'm grateful and I'm not gonna stop until we find the answers for everyone. We need funds for research to find the answers for pain and for the cure for these disorders. And without your help, we can't do it.